about all the holidays you have in the past? Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. It seems like all those holidays are put into one, but a thousand times greater. And that's the magic of Comic-Con. All right, guys, I'm here at Comic-Con, and this is the official ground zero for everything that has to do with comic books, obviously, but also horror movies, sci-fi, fantasy, video games, and toys. But it's not just about the industry marketing themselves to fanboys and fangirls. This is about fanboys and fangirls themselves, so let's go meet a few. I got my press badge, we're gonna get Comic-Con. Come on. Comic-Con, nerd paradise. I love Comic-Con, man. Comic-Con's a lot of fun. Uh, it's our third year in a row, so we're like pretty much veterans. It's weird, I don't know. No, I love Comic-Con, can you kidding me? It's like, it's this weird field trip. It's like out of body experience that it's normal to see somebody dressed up in some outrageous costume and it's abnormal to see you dress in like this. Is that a real working machine gun and how the hell did you get in here with them? Well, first off, I'm a ninja and secondly, it does work. Okay, you just shot my cameraman. This is huge. I think our biggest one in Australia is maybe one one hundredth the size of this. So when I walked in for the first time, I was a little overwhelmed. Well, there's so much to do here. I mean, if you're a gamer, they got all kind of video games everywhere. If you read comics, you can still get comic books here, believe it or not. 300, good. You think the silver covers as much uh, as 300? I don't know, actually. Because if it is, then I have a $300 comic book at home. One of the cool things about Comic-Con is these interactive booths where you get to like really, really find out what these movies and comic books are all about. So this is an interactive graphic novel, but stick your finger in this, oh, there you go, now you're going in. Now, are the little thought bubbles still there or do we hear them? You hear them. The next thing you gotta do is you gotta come out with these in Spanish and we'll sell them in Mexico. I love it. Viva la Mexico. <laughs> Now, when I was a kid, and I used to collect comic books mostly from the Marvel Universe, I'd come to conventions, and I noticed it was mostly white guys. But man, has it grown. Now, when you come and you see these fanboys and fangirls, you notice there's a lot more ethnicities, Latinos, and there's a lot more girls. I've been reading comics since I was a child, and I read comics to my boys, so this is very exciting to us. I've been doing it for 17 years, been bringing them since they were in diapers, so this is just awesome. They look now, cool. how cool is mom for dressing up and coming with you guys to Comic-Con? Awesome. She's pretty cool. I'm currently drawing Amazing Spider-Man. Marvel is looking more into the Mexican community. The most, well, there's a lot of Mexicans working there, but also there's a lot of people from uh, South America, like Argentina, Brazil. It has nothing to do with the, with the language or anything like that. It has to do a lot with the talent, and it's great to know that these big, big brands are now looking out to get the talent everywhere. You know, being surrounded by people who are dressed up as some of my favorite superheroes is totally getting me back in touch with the comic book geek inside me. I love seeing how much effort they put into the costumes and to come over here and representing, you know, this culture. And these aren't fanboys and fangirls. These are fun boys and fun girls, because all this is about having fun. I'm going to keep having fun. You wait around here. Peace. <laughs>